start. Welcome to Youth Voices Live. Um, this is, uh, oh, what, what is this? This is the 6th of March, um, 2015, and um, it's a Friday, and it's a Friday afternoon, Friday morning out there in Oakland. We have uh, some students from Oakland, Fremont High School. We have some students from Salt Lake City, um, Judge Memorial um, in Salt Lake City, and some students from Okimos, uh, Michigan, and um, um, uh, Okemos. So say it again for me. Sorry. Okemos. 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 Okay. <laughs> I'll put the accent on the right syllable there. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Um, keep correcting me. We'll we'll get this right. And Karen Fastenpower is uh, guiding us along here as well. Um, I don't. Let's quickly go around and have people just say your names. Um, and uh, like what grade you're in, just and just briefly how you're feeling today. But we've got to go fast. So let's start out there in Salt Lake City. Okay. I'm Caroline Holyoke. I'm a senior. I'm feeling pretty good today. I'm Sam Stevenson. I'm a senior, and I'm feeling great. <laughs> I'm Dominic. I'm also a senior, and I'm pretty tired, honestly. <laughs> uh, I'm Jim, and I'm, I'm doing just fine, and I'm a senior. Welcome. Oh, Kimus. Did I get it right? Ah, right. uh, no. Oh, one more time. Oh, wait, wait, one more time. Okamis. Oh, Okamis. Oh, oh, that's it's very simple. Okay. Yeah. I'm Charles. I'm a freshman. I'm doing good. I'm Jen. I'm a sophomore. Doing good too. Great. Welcome. And out to Oakland. There are two rooms in Oakland. Go ahead, guys. Uh, I'm Christian. Uh, I'm a senior, and I'm feeling all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Gotcha. I'm Ami. I'm a, I'm a uh, senior, and I'm feeling. Uh, so we're somewhere between exhausted and all right. Sounds good. Uh, my name's Lata. I'm also a senior, and I'm feeling. Kind of drained. My name Q. I'm a senior, and uh, I'm feeling pretty good, I guess. Okay. And the other room. My name is Alma. I'm a senior, and I'm feeling all right. My name is Jessica. I'm also a senior, and I feel okay. Oh, my name is Sanjoy. I'm also a senior. I'm feeling okay. <laughs> all right. How are you doing, Karen? Karen. I'm good. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, um, some protests there in uh, Arizona around the testing, by the way, but we'll talk about that later. So, here's here's um, I, one of the one of the things we had hoped to do, and the the most important thing is that you guys get to talk to each other. Um, and I think it's uh, Charles from Michigan. Is it Charles? who suggested that we talk about um, police brutality. Um, and so I'm putting that right up front. Um, however, I do want to take a minute to say that what, what we had hoped to do is also provide, when we do these um, live Youth Voices experiences together, um, hangouts, we, we also wanted to fo have you guys focus on a text. And I don't know if anybody got a chance to look at the text, it's two texts from the Talmud um, this this month. Um, and I don't know if, you, and I sent you all an email. Check your emails, guys. So <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, but, it, but it doesn't, whether or not you looked at them, we can we could talk about them briefly now. And what I'd like to do is merely read them and get your quick response to them and then get to the issue. Um, the big question here is how do we disagree Right, um, and uh, so the question is, how do we disagree? And and given some of the hot button important issues out there, um, that's that's a good question. It seems to a lot of people. So let me just read. There are just three paragraphs, but it will take me a few minutes to do this. I apologize ahead of time, but here we go. Below are two texts from different parts of the Talmud the major corpus of rabbinical, rabbinic law and culture in the Jewish tradition edited around 
500 CE. There are two texts. That's the first one. The other one is 300 years later, 200 CE. Right? They tell the story of the academies of Hillel and Shamil. I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Next time I'll check before I try to read this. So like, anyway, two different schools and ideological camps that thrived in the first century of the Common Era. Though they disagreed at times profoundly about how Jewish law should be decided, they managed those disagreements in fruitful ways, as we'll see below. Okay, so here are the two texts. Rabbi Abba said in the name of Shemuel, for three years the Academy of Shammai and the Academy of Hillel, Hillel argued. One group asserted the law follows our views, and the other asserted, the law follows our views. A heavenly voice came down and announced, they are both the words of the living God, but the law follows the academy of Hillel. Since both were the words of the living God, what entitled the academy of Hillel to have the law agree with them? Because they were kind and modest, they studied their own rulings and those of the academy of Shammai. And not only that, they mentioned the rulings of the Academy of Shammai before their own. So that's the first text. And the second quick text here is, and with all this, we want you to be thinking about disagreement and what this means about disagreement. Even though the Academy of Shammai declares one thing kosher, while the Academy of Hillel declares the same thing not kosher, even though one forbids while the other permits, the Academy of Shammai did not refrain from marrying the women of the Academy of Hillel, nor did the Academy of Hillel refrain from marrying the women of the Academy of Shammai. Even though one side declares things to be pure while the other side declares the same thing to be impure, nonetheless they did not refrain from preparing things requiring the state of purity by using things from the other side. All right, so very quickly, your response to that text, um, those two texts, just anything that comes to mind, but in particular um, about disagreement. What, what do you think these texts are trying to say about how people disagree? Please jump in. <laughs> Oh, no, you're leaving. No, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> now, now she. <laughs> to, ju to jump in first, I would say good, good. that some things, sometimes people have very similar views, and but there's that one tiny bit that um, separates them, and yeah. I think the Academy of Hillel, if I'm correct. The reason why they said it, uh, the law went with them was because they were more humble than the academy, well, than the other academy. I think that's why. Yeah, so, okay. they mentioned other people's views first before their own. They kind of add students to their own views. This one is talking. It's mm -hmm. laughing. <laughs> <laughs> You're figuring out the technology, which is cool. Anybody else have any thoughts about what was just said there? Did anybody hear what I was saying, or is that not going through the computer? No, we're hearing you. Say uh -oh. it one more. Say it one more time, though. Go ahead. Oh, um, I just think that because the Academy of Lille, well, yeah. um, mentioned the other academies' thoughts first, it kind of adds credence to their own beliefs because they addressed the opposing side as opposed to just ignoring them. There you go. I think it's already right now. Yeah, yeah, let me change the bandwidth. The Wait, girls. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, they're not coming through. We can hear you, Sunjoy. Yeah, you, can, like, yeah. you can't hear us, Sunjoy? Um, it's kind of a bit, like, blurry a little bit. So. Oh, OK, sorry. Sounds like a robot. <laughs> sounds like a robot. What about the other the other room in Oakland there? Do you guys want to jump in on this? Just the question of disagreeing and what these texts might mean about it? Hey, 
We can't hear you guys. Okay, no. Yes. No, we're getting very we're getting very garbled from Oakland there. But uh, no, I think no. It's better now, though. Go ahead. We can hear you now. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. The both academies. Well, yeah, both good. academies had similar thoughts and beliefs, but they had little, like, a few Difference. little differences that, you know, even though they disagreed, they, they went along and did their own thing, which made them, like, disagree more. Which caused like little disagreements into big disagreements. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Shall we move to some issue? And we can certainly use Charles's issue here. Um, to, I mean, police brutality certainly is in the news a lot. Um, somebody posted recently that it's there again with the uh, young man who was the homeless person who was shot in Los Angeles. Um, hey. It was a recent post on, on Youth Voices. But, uh, Charles, do you want to say what you think the issue is there? Why don't you start, since you wanted to bring this up, do you want to talk about it for first? first? Okay. Um, uh, I don't know if I should start on the homeless person or just police brutality entirely, because I, I also saw the article on the homeless person. So... Just whatever you, whatever you're thinking. You're thinking. Okay, so I'm gonna go with the homeless first. first. Um, is just that some police um, in different states have, I think, given way too much power, and they've been going a little bit nuts with it. And not only that, but people like to think that since it's blacks that are getting killed. But it's not just blacks, it's everybody, everybody in the United States. There are a bunch of people from different cultures, different races, that have been subject to police brutality. But the way that the, the news and all that stuff is set up, they've been focusing on one group and so forth. That's been the African Americans. And yeah. Yeah, and I think it's pretty valid that you said it's not just one group that they're targeting. Because, I mean, I'm not all that dark at all, but I get profiled very frequently because I have slightly darker skin than most police in Salt Lake. <laughs> so, I mean, random security checks at airports aren't all that random, and police enjoy pulling me over. So, I mean, it's, it's good that you point out that it's a widespread problem and not just, not just an isolated event. Can you hear me? Yes. Check the mic. Check. Um, uh, going to police brutality, uh, we argue about that in our class a lot. And, uh, they say that all the like the majority of police officers are like, you know, they're all the the bad guys, as you can say. But like. I say that not all police officers are are like you know the bad guys, cause like you know I got a uh, I have an uncle who's a police officer, and like sometimes I think about him like if somebody you know they see him or they're gonna like you know think wrong and like oh he's a police officer you know they gotta do that and, like some like paranoid. Like something's gonna happen to him. So like, what we argue when we argue in class, like I, there's a lot of people who argue against the police officers, and there's like a short amount of people that argue with, like on the side of the police officers. And like, I, I was curious, like, yeah, like not, not all should be treated. 
Yeah, I I also agree because like you can't generalize a group of people. You can't let you can't set them under the same label and just label them as bad guys because they aren't. Just like what he said, there are some good ones, but he sat with many. Um, with many. Um, it's like bringing more attention to the issue of the police and it's like rather than. As a police officer, it's their job to protect people in their communities. But, like, as a working, I show not people who are um, turning to self defense and trying to protect themselves before protecting the people that they need to. And they, that's like a job to protect themselves. Like, I think it was a good point that you brought up that now people are just kind of generalizing cops as all bad guys, even though they aren't. It's kind of cops are generalizing certain groups of people as being dangerous, even though they really aren't. And now people are generalizing the cops in the same kind of manner. I think it's good that you brought that point up. Uh, I would add on. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, well poli with police brutality, I feel like um, the main issue is how the officers do, because I think that has an impact on how the police act and you know, deal with the situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Um, to agree with the whole generalizing cops and such, I have an aunt who's uh, well, used to be in the police force and I realize that most of these cops that have ended up being put under the label of police brutality, they were forced, their, their hands were forced because they were scared for their lives and they have family and friends to return to. So really, they're fighting for their life just as much as the person who was shot. So. No, it's here, it's nice. It's nice. No, that's you. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, I just say that like nowadays, as a culture, we're really starting to realize how much authority we give to the police officers and like the the police forces around the nation. And so now that we have all this sort of greater coverage of the police force, we're starting to realize what happens when that authority is misused. And so really, we're, we're like as a culture, we're starting to say like, are we comfortable giving so much authority and power to a select group of people? And I think that really has to do with a lot of, like, the spread of democracy around the world, and we're just aware, of, like, do we want this group of people that we just understand should have control over us? We're just, like, we're starting to question why we give them so much authority and control, and so I think that's part of the reason that the media gives so much coverage on when issues come up, just because people are really starting to question why do we have so much faith and why do we think that the police officers, officers should have control over us. Uh, let me jump in. Um, to agree with the point that people were talking about, um, and how some police are wrong, I just think the main fact is not that the police, the idea of the police force and the entire police force is bad. The problem is people in itself. People are greedy, so yeah, that's how a lot of stuff happens. People go in to get bigger busts so that they get um, fame and more power as they move up in the system. And other times they're just sitting there and just think, well, hey, I've done this in the past, and after they get a drug bust, they just go and they may take some evidence because it's right there. And it's free, but it's legal. Charles, does, does the young man behind you want to say something? Do you want to introduce yourself? Introduce yourself. I am Daniel. What's your grade? <laughs> oh, my grade. I'm 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 a freshman. Welcome. We are going to have to figure out this broadcast uh, echo stuff, but we, you know, we'll go as we go here. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I think it's because it's being projected also. 
And mm -hmm. there's like a little delay in the projection. But that's okay. Hey, wait, hold up. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Make sure. <laughs> Right. So, what the, what's the disagreement, though? I mean, you guys barely, I mean, you talked to each other last week, and you saw in second week, and I, I kind of feel like you move very quickly to, let's see what we agree, and that's cool, right? But we also want to think about where is the disagreement, not even between the, uh, you guys, but... In our culture in general, where's the disagreement around these issues? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the disagreement comes from what Jim was saying earlier when we're, uh, he was talking about how much power we're giving to the people who are supposed to be... You know, By that you mean the police. police. Yeah. And uh -huh. so um, you know, I think the disagreement would come when people are saying the police currently have too much power or at the same time you can see all these bad things happening and if the police had more power they'd be able to stop it. I kind of also think that the disagreement is like how people will see the action police officers. Some people feel like that was just a fact that was reasonable to shoot and will eventually kill a man. Um, but I personally think that it's like not justified to shoot someone that's not fine. It's not justified what? Say it again. It's not justified to shoot or like an arm. I think that's where another disagreement arises is some people think it is viable to shoot to kill people if, even if they're unarmed. I think that is a major cause of argument is whether it's okay or not to use deadly force. Yeah, I think a lot of the disagreement Sorry about that. Um, and I think a lot of the disagreement also comes because, like, we're, we're putting, like, people in. So, I mean, like, police officers, of course, they're human, and, of course, they want to protect themselves. And so we're putting, in, putting them in dangerous situations. And then when they go to, the like, extreme measures to protect themselves, then we think it's wrong because we think they should sort of act at a higher level than, like, your standard person. And we believe that they shouldn't only be thinking about their life but the, the, the people that they've been sort of tasked with protecting. Uh, and so I think a lot of disagreement comes from there where, like, we just need to recognize that these are people, and so, of course, they're going to act with their sort of, like, self-interest first. And so we, we sort of have to be realistic in some ways. And also working off of, I'm sorry, I forget your name, but but out in Oakland, uh, you were talking about, like, it's, it, is, like, it is wrong to kill someone who's unarmed, and, like, I believe that, um, and I agree with that. But the thing is, like, also we need to sort of figure out how we define what is armed and what isn't. And so here in Salt Lake City, there was, a, there was a man in the avenue, which is sort of like a residential area, and he, he got in a disagreement with a cop and then, like, rushed him with a, with a shovel and, like, really, like, hurt and injured the, the police officer and, like, broke bones, and the police officer ended up shooting the guy. Uh, and so a lot of people said, like, oh, he wasn't armed with a gun, so why would the police officer shoot? And so, I mean, it, it's hard to say, like, oh, this person is unarmed. Like, we, we, because we usually say, like, oh, he, that person doesn't have a gun. But, I mean, you can, like, it wouldn't be quite as easy, but you can, it still has the potential to kill someone if you attack them with, like, sort of an object or a weapon. And so I think just as a, like, as a society, we need to sort of decide what it, like, what counts as being armed and unarmed. Because, like, that, that's cause for a lot of disagreement because someone would say that person had an object that could be used as a weapon when someone else would say, well, that, that object isn't designed to kill. And so we, we just have to sort of make this shift to understanding what counts as being armed and what doesn't, and just how that affects the police. And how much force can be used in each instance. I'd agree with that, because people that know the wrong and know the police are good, they get desperate, so they can really turn almost anything into a weapon, if they really wanted to. So they could, people could say that since the person like do a church person and end up incapacitating, incapacitating one of the cops and then the other cop shot him in the leg or the dude was running and he fell when the cop shot so it missed his leg entirely who might have hit some vital organ or something. The fact of the matter is the person used the chair as a weapon 
and the use of that look uh, having to result in another cop being injured. Thus, he the weapon to sell him the calm down and stop. But life is life, stuff happens, and really, cops lose control in some situations, and there's no other option. I think it's good that you brought up. Oh, sorry. I think it's good that you brought up uh, the cop trying to shoot him in the leg as opposed to a vital area, and I think that's another problem that, or another cause for disagreement that people are having, is that cops are trained to they shoot to kill. I mean, that's how they're trained, and I think that's a major cause for disagreement with a lot of people. Because um, the cops just aim straight for the vital organs as opposed to incapacitation, which is a much tougher shot to make and, I mean, would result in not a death, but, you know. Yeah? Uh, in regard to this agreement, uh, why is it that a police officer has less time for committing a crime than to a citizen who committed a crime? Like, for example, uh, the Oscar Grant case that happened here in Oakland, that cop, I think he got like a year or so. Yep. He got a couple. Yeah, he got like a year or a month in prison and like for shooting Oscar Grant. Like, I was just wondering in one of our classes that if it was like a regular citizen who, who saw Oscar Grant, he would have did like life or sentence uh, for death penalty. Yeah, the death penalty, whatever it's called. And, like, uh, that's a big thing that we uh, go through in history class because we don't get, like, I mean, we have uh, this opportunity like, like, more power, I guess. But, like, we still don't get, like, why why aren't they treated the same as citizens? I mean, a police officer, you're still under the law and job, but you still don't get less time for committing the crime. Because if that's not in everybody, who wants revenge against their enemies can be a cop and go shoot their enemies and they can get like less time in prison and not even do life or the death penalty. But yeah. So I, I want to give you guys credit here and so don't misunderstand me, but this feels very very different from this conversation than I hear in the media around these issues. Why do you think it's like, does it feel different to you, or is this what you're hearing when you turn the TV on? To it? Well, I think it's kind of the media's job to exaggerate things and make things bigger deal than they actually are. I mean, my dad works for an ad agency, and the point is to get an emotional rise out of people. So I think it's, I mean, common citizens discussing something is a lot less agitated and polarized than the media would like people to believe. But then I feel like you have to take into account that, um, like, if it were just the media exaggerating things, then you would think that there might not have been riots over this sort of issue. So there's obviously right. heated feelings that maybe aren't just coming out in this discussion. Sorry, I think it's an ex um, exaggeration of events. Not so much exaggeration, they just focus exclusively on certain aspects and occasionally omit details that could make it seem not as black and white. Black and white. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it also what that means. Not have to keep doing that. I'm sorry, um, but I think like an, another reason that sort of in this group we're so sort of like agreeable is it is it partially just like being in high school. We're sort of trained that it's like you don't want to make enemies, and it's like you always want to sort of be sort of like a friendly person, and you never want to really get into serious disagreements with people. And so I feel like being in high school has almost like trained us to, to agree and try to like see both sides of the argument. Just so then, like, I mean, with being in high school, it's like you're forced to take classes with all these people, and so if you don't like sort of make friends with them, then you're sort of in trouble because you're gonna have somebody you're gonna like you're gonna be forced into situations with them. Uh, and so I think that part part of the reason it's like we all sort of agree so readily and so easily is that it's just like a product of like where we are in our lives is that. We've sort of been led to just agree with people and sort of look at different perspectives and say, oh, so this is what that person says. I might not agree, but I'll still like allow them to have their own separate point of view. So enjoy. Go ahead. Uh, Do you have anything you'd like to say in that room? Um, 
Well, I would just like to add on that I think police officers taking justice in like certain race they are to be target. Certain certain races are being targeted at and I think that's something that should be fixed and that's what our EPA to police officers take that as an advantage. Um, but also adding to that is that mainly African American is being targeted. Like we could tell like, you know, Emmett Till, um, Mike Brown, they're being shot without no justice and they're not given a fair trial. And but also is that um if we keep not like making no changes, like the police mentality will continue in the future. I, I want to do a time check. What time does lunch start? Approximately three minutes. Okay. Glad that check. So let's go around and hear sort of final thoughts from everybody, if we could. And like, what's this make you think about the issue? And thank you, Charles, for the issue. And about disagreement in general. Do you want to go first, Charles? You had your finger up there. Good. Um, I was going to jump back onto uh, the subject of the media. I think now as the media, there has to be an agitator and then there has to be a victim. For their, yeah. So, really, what they're doing now is they're saying that the police is the agitator, the bad guy, and all the stuff that they've done, and all the stuff they've done in the past and such. But they've only, they're only using certain scenarios. They're not using all the other scenarios with the police have been the good guys. They're not doing that. They're going to all of the deaths or the beatings of African American males or African American just the African American community by police officers. And we know that not all police are, police officers are bad and it's just that there's a few that turns the eyes of the media into police brutality. So yeah. Is it Lynn? Jim, I'm sorry. Jim, do you have any thoughts here? You want to jump in? I remember, like, I heard some people say about, like, police power, about, like, police power. Like, they have too strong power, so, like, um, they think sometimes they can't manage really. And then I think, like, it's not, it's not related to power, I think, really, because, um, I think police need power, but like they have to really be careful to use it. And then, um, like, and then they have to think about it a lot. I think it's not like power. And, yep. That, that's an interesting distinction you made there. Thank you. Um, Oakland, do you want to say your last thoughts? Let's. Then we'll get to Salt Lake City here. Anybody jump in? Um, well, I really oh. You can go. We know it's real now. There's a bell. Okay. <laughs> Any, go ahead. Anybody want to say anything here at the end? All right. Thank you, Oakland. I know you want to go to lunch. Salt Lake City, uh, just quickly go around and say what you're thinking. Thank you. And thank you. Goodbye. Next time. See you guys. Bye bye. Salt Lake City, anything else to add? Yeah, it seems to me like it's. This a conversation like this is really feeling yeah. Uh, as to why it's so hard for our country as a whole to resolve it, if it's hard for even just yes. a group of however many of us there are to even set out exactly what the issues are, I think that just el elucidates like why it's so hard for us as a country to um, even sort this issue out. Because even a group of teenagers with like what uh, like good feelings towards one another, it's really hard for us to even set out exactly what the issue is at hand. So I think that just shows why it's such a difficult and complex issue. It's interesting. Yeah. Should we make that our last thought here? <laughs> Thank you all. Um,
and thank you, Chris, Don, and Joe, um, who are the teachers in the background there. Um, and thank you, Karen. Uh, we'll be back next Friday. We'll figure out how we're going to connect, and we'll be in touch. Uh, find each other on Youth Voices. Uh, if you go to youthvoices.net slash live, you'll see uh, the names of each of you listed there on the Titan pad. You can find each other's uh, work there and, and respond to each other's work as well. So thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good weekend, yeah, so, everybody. Yes. You too. Should we fix that so that we're... Bye-bye. Have fun. Bye. 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 Bye.